Since 1999, 157 women have been elected into the 469 member National Assembly, with 38 being senators and 119 members of the House of Representatives. And when you compare this figure with um, their male counterparts, that's about 2,657. paints a picture of what it is when it comes to women participation in politics and of course the roles they are playing and of course the aspirations since Nigeria's return to the Fourth Republic. This morning we have the special assistant to Ondo State Governor on Women Mobilization, uh, Mrs. Ayo Aino Bayo, Mrs. Aino Bayo. And of course the focus will be on Ondo women in politics and preparedness when you talk about preparedness that tells you also about the coming election and of course the days ahead beyond the election. Good morning ma'am. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Good morning sir. Thanks for having me here today. What's the climate looking like for women uh, at this time? Particularly when uh, when we talk about down to the election. Like you said my mandate is uh, to mobilize women for the upcoming election. If you look at the political circle now, you can see that the awareness is increasing for women to participate more in the political process in the states. Number one, if you look at the history, it has not been as good as this because our governor, Honorable Lucky Olimison Ayidatwa, has been a gender friendly governor. If you look Looking at the various appointment he has made so far, he has put women in a key position and is still going to put more there because he believes in the capacity of the women that are working presently with him. Coming back to your question, mobilizing women in Ondo State has been a bit difficult. Looking at the terrain of our area, which we are Terrain. If you want to start, for example, let me start from the south now. We will move as far as Obina, Benefa, Ilepete. These are the riverine side. Going to Eseodo, Ijo, Ibobini, mobilize them out to come and support the candidate, the man that we believe that can do it, the man that can take us to the promised line. Has started it and we will continue to do it. So we. Want to mobilize them. We are not looking at the central area, that is the Ondo Central Aziz. And going back to the North Grand Sanatorium, we are starting it from Ikun, Akoko, Arigidi, Ogbagi, all the Akoko side, all the four Goloku governments in Akoko coming down to Ose, or War, all these Aziz. If you look at Ondo State very well, in Odibo alone, I'm talking about Odibo local government, we are sharing border with two states. We share brother with Ogun State, we are sharing brother with Edo. We are sharing brother with Edo State again. So, and also in the central here, we are sharing brother with Ekiti State and Osho State. All these women are in these various locations in the communities. We want to bring them back. Those who are already out of the fold, we are bringing them to the fold. And those who are already in the fold, specifically the women with PVC. I used to say, if you don't have PVC, you don't have electoral value. My 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 category, my my own preaching is not for all the women. I'm targeting the women with PVC that can come out and vote. Having said that, the reason why we are doing this job is that looking at his excellency lucky only Mr. it started well. Immediately he took over the mantle of the leadership by the demise of his predecessor, Ms. Gentle Torres, that is the former governor. Uh, but he started it by mobilizing the of going back to work to complete the work they have started with his predecessor. Immediately he went to the education sector. He went to a unimate, he gave them one billion, that was a February one, to 
complete their capital project that they are doing. He went to on those uh, 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 also tech in Okutikuba. He released. He gave them one point two billion. Maybe, maybe we should um, situate this conversation around uh, women uh, mobilization and empowerment. Yes, you, 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 you've, you've talked about what you've been doing to go to the nooks and corners of the state mobilizing women, and I'm, I'm really. Um, I'm lost. I want to know why you feel that women should support your principle. Why should it be at a time like this that it's um, that you're remembering that there are women in the north, the south, the central? You've analyzed the geography. The population of Ondo states. Mm. This morning, I found out that from the Bureau of Statistics, we are about 5.3 million. And all the women, the, the female is 49.6 percent. So that means the both men are equal, apart. They are very close to each other. And women, by our nature, when we are going out to vote, we come out with our children, we come out with our husband, we bring our families, our neighbors so that they can come out and vote. It's not that we are just gathering women now. The women has been participating in politics in Ondo State. But what we want to do is that we want to bring in more women to join the participation, especially the rural-based women who have not been privileged to be their voice to be heard. I, had a, I presented a paper on Saturday, and I was saying that these are the factor militating against women in the parties, the hierarchical nature of Ondo uh, State or Nigeria as a whole, and we are looking beyond that. We are looking at the way forward. And one of the way forward we are talking about is that the political party should make the, the form free for women, they should make it friendly, and so and so forth. So what we are saying is that women must come out together as a force so that we can have a voice in this coming election. Mrs. Vaira, you know, um, beyond having a voice in that election, uh, I like to know why the focus is on women at a point in time like this. Uh, if, uh, just if, if women feel okay, they want to support your candidates, what becomes of them at the end of the day? Thank you, sir. During election electionary campaigns, you find politicians get to the nooks and corners, the places where there are no roads, the places where there are no amenities, you still find a way of getting to meet the people at the grassroots. Thank you for that question, sir. Number one, I want to say categorically here that the governor that I am privileged to be working with, Honorable Lord Kurimi Sanayidatwa, is a man that fear God. He has the heart of God in him, and he has a human face. And if you look at what he has started with, he has started with alleviating the pain that people are going through. We can't rule the fact out that there are pains in the city, there are hunger in the land. And this is not only in Ondo State, it's not only in Nigeria. I can categorically say that it's global. But we are looking at what we are bringing our women is that being my own mandate core area as a women mobilization, my mandate is to bring more women to this political process. So that at the end of the day, I can assure you that our government will not abandon them. Looking at the fact that if they have a representation, they can hold on to the representation that, okay, we ask us to vote for you, we voted for you. We want our reward. And he will hear to their voice. And he talks to them. Nothing we bring before his table that concerns women matter. He will always answer us. His, 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 his mother is a woman. And he has why he has children that are female too. He has a lot of passion for women. And I know that he must surely answer to the call of the women. And that November 16th. Just a moment. You, you did say the other time that your, your concern uh, is basically with women with PVC. So those who have no PVC are not useful to you as far as this mobilization is concerned. Looking at what could be their needs too. So yeah. is it just about PVC or about uh, looking at development and empowerment of women in, in the general sense? Thank you so much for that question. So that is why we have the Ministry of Women Affairs. Mm -hmm. Women affairs is to look at the, to encompasses all the women in those states. You may be PDP, you may be APC, you can be Abga, you can be.
take care of the women force. Okay. But my mandate as a mobilizer is to mobilize APC women that ask their PVC that's ready to vote for Mr. Governor come November 16. That is where the, the difference is. But in terms of taking care of the women as a whole, why not is the role of the Mr. Governor? Mr. Governor is not a governor of PDP, APC alone. It's a governor of is executive governor of Undo State that take care of all the needs. The role we kept Anna from Obile from Alakbaka down here, both PDP, APC, PDP is part play the same road. We cannot say, okay, because you are not waiting for us, you are not going to do your road. That's what we are saying. The women are fears the part uh, ministry, headed by Honorable Commissioner uh, Lola Fagbemi is to take care of all the women in Ondo State. And if you look at it recently, Mr. Governor appointed the special advisor in that ministry again, so that it make the job easier for her. So we are bringing all women under the ministry, but what we are saying categorically now, I'm impressed from your submission about your analysis of the different uh, part of the state. You really broke it down, going to Bela, even you know, down the River Rhine area and all of that. But who would say you've rightly agreed in a way that there is hunger in the land? And when it comes to mobilization, there are also things that people want to hear, which perhaps I know that you're also telling them. But what are they telling you in return? Because you talk about your mandate being, you know, garnering the support of women for your principal. But Again, one would ask, what now happens? Because the election is a pendulum. What happens beyond the election cycle for some of these women who you are mobilizing? Thank you so much, sir. If you look at this critically, the hunger in the land is not only in Nigeria. Even in the United Kingdom. My son called me this morning, I was telling me a story that is beyond my imagination. That even in UK, the bro If you look at it now, they have opened the window for 180 days to bring in, to reduce the taxes and to allow maize grains to come into Nigeria. At least to alleviate the, the, the pains of the people. Everybody is, is real, realistically, we know that there is hunger in the lab. But what is the role of the government? Recently, about two weeks ago, the Mr. Governor shared a palliative, and this thing has gone beyond Akure, Aziz, or Central Area. It's every local government will be given. And they are distributed it. At least this one will help them to at least have something to eat before we started uh, doing our long term in, uh, solution to this problem. And like you said, after election, what next? After election, at which I know, which I believe that my principal is going to win by the special grace of God, all the women, we have their data. What is lacking behind it all along is there is no database for this. Let us know the women in this local government. Let us know those who can pick up skills. Because our governor is a man that believes in the human capacity development. And let us see how we can develop them. It's not all of them that can come to our to come and work. Some can stay in the riverine area. What is their need? Okay, they need a fish net. They need we are to own their fish. We are to roast their fish. We can provide the need for them. We are looking at collaborating with entrepreneur now so that we can see how to raise our young children instead of seeing them standing on the roadside in the night and the rest. Let us see how we can let them acquire skill and work on it and be able to be self-sufficient on their own. So our, our advocacy is not only for the governor to win, but after the governor has won the election, better life for women. And these women laying bare some of their problems to you when you get to their doorstep for mobilization? Yes. What do they tell you? They used to tell us that they don't want to come and vote. And we, we are assuring them that this Mr. Governor we are working for we surely look critically into them. Because what we are doing now, we are doing door to door. That Yoruba people call it horo, see horo. We want to go to every nook and corner of the state. So that at the end of the day, the government can be felt in those areas. What empirical evidence do you have that um, you have no idea to uh, we listen to the plight of the people, we heed their call if he's elected? What is what? What evidence do you have to say that yes? Yeah, there's something. What, what I've said it. 
he did like he started this interview that he said that uh, he said something I long okay that's not you said something I just want to give us one case that okay so this is this isn't just a lot of the people is there any like that that could be um uh, an evidence to the people that yes he will listen to us if he yes mm. when we went for the graduation ceremony at Unimed mm. we were there to Out their knees. He promised them, and the next ESCO meeting he had, he approved the ESCO approved it. I can, I, at least I believe in witness to that. When we went to also take, and they brought out their knees, oh, this is what they need, this is what they Then they bring this and instantly, the following week, after one point two billion for them, this are beer. And when the, uh, when this, uh, when he resumed office, they were talking about 2012 uh, retirees that have not been paid. He asked them to bring out their files. Less than two weeks of resuming in the office, he paid the first set, one billion. And just last week, Tuesday, in Atala Baka here, he has paid the second part. About one billion has been released to them. All those who were there, they were they are all video based. But look, you can check it out. They are all working. So he's the man that believes we trust him, that he trusts the process, he knows what they want, and he has a human face. Because that is where the difference lies. When you have a government that has a human face, that has a human feeling, you'll be able to listen faster and work so that the people can be happy. All right, perhaps we take this conversation, you know, um, away from um, what you're really doing to project for what is likely to also happen in the future. I would like to ask. Are you bothered, because it's safe to say you pass for an advocate for the women, are you bothered that in this election, the come November 16th governorship election, when you look at the political parties and the candidates and the, you know, the deputies that they parade, that appears that we just have just a female on, 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 on the ticket of the political party as a deputy, uh, deputy governorship. Uh, are you bothered about that? Not only that, I'm not only that. The, the Rwanda is a good example. 2018, they have 18% female participation. As at today, they have 61% because the advocacy continues. If we continue in this trend, very soon, we still have a governor in this state that's going to be a woman. We will get to that process. It's not only this election. Look at National Assembly now. Out of all 109 senators, we only have three women there. And the number of, uh, in the Greek chamber, we only have 70 women. So it's not unique to those states alone. And I said it in that lecture, and I want to say it here. The reason militating against women in political, in elective position are numerous. Among others are the cost, the, the, the cost of taking form, the cost of the process is alarming. Two, the, the hooliganism involved, the killing. Look at what even in America we are talking about. The mother of all democracy. Look at what happened. Women and another thing is that we believe that Africa, African society, especially Nigeria, is a is a patriarchal state. We are the main has it all, which is not true. So with with advocacy, with sensitization, our women will get to that where we are going. Time a woman has become a former speaker in this state, and we know that we can move higher. It's not only this coming election. We know that others this election, other elections are coming. And the sensitization and advocacy will continue, and our women will be encouraged to come out. And I know you, by coming election, you see a lot of women taking a lot of elective positions. I also know that some of those who are watching us at this time are hoping that, you know, by virtue of what they will say, the vantage position that you have, you continue to, to champion the cause of the women. Thank you so much, um, Mrs. Ainobayo, for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me, sir. Yeah, she is special assistant to the governor, governor of Indo State, uh, Blocky Aida, to her own women. Right here with us in the studio, please stay.